This is a tutorial on using custom bone objects or shapes or widgets in Blender. I'll try to cover pretty much everything you need to know, even if you're a beginner or if you're coming from another software like uh, 3ds Max or Maya, Cinema 4D and so on. I'm going to show you a completely manual way to assign bone widgets. Uh, then I'm going to show you an automated solution using an add-on and in another video, I'm going to show you how you can edit the widgets for a Rigify rig. If you don't know, Rigify is an add-on that basically automates and simplifies rigging to a large degree. So custom widgets can make a rig easier to understand and work with. You have full freedom to make any bone take any shape you like. So for example, you can take a rig from looking something like this to looking more like this. This has many advantages. It not only looks nicer, but it's also easier to select the individual bones and also the shapes generally tell you what you're going to be controlling. So your rig will be more intuitive. But anyway, we are going to go back to this uh, dwarf here and we are going to set up custom bone shapes for him. But before that, let's cover the absolute basics. I'm going to start from a new empty scene in Blender. I'm going to need an armature, so I'm going to press Shift A, armature, single bone. Let's switch to pose mode, go to the bone tab, and um, find the viewport display area and expand it. And in there, you'll also see custom shape. And if you expand it, you'll see a field named custom object. And now currently we only have our armature in the scene, which won't work. So let's create some actual widgets that we can use. Go to object mode. In Blender, widgets are created from geometry, from a mesh. That may confuse you if you're coming from another software. In other applications, custom shapes are often created using splines or NURBS. In Blender, you can kind of do this. As well, uh, I'll explain that in a bit, but generally we use a mesh. So uh, press Shift A, mesh, and you can create any mesh you like. I'm going to go for a UV sphere and move it to the side a little bit. And for demonstration purposes, let's also create a curve object. So Shift A, curve, and let's uh, choose the circle and move it to the side. Now curve is Blender's word for a spline. Okay, let's go to our bone, switch to pose mode, and under custom object, now we have a couple of options. Just to see what happens, let's actually try to apply the armature as a custom object, and our bone just disappeared. And that is because the armature does not have any geometry in it. There are no vertices, no edges, and so uh, Blender simply shows us nothing. Let's uh, also select the Bezier circle, and again, there's nothing. And that is again because the Bezier circle is not a mesh, it's not geometry. In a second, I'm going to show you a workaround so that you can use your curves as custom objects. But now let's try selecting the sphere. And as you can see, our bone took the shape of this sphere. And if you're mo more experienced, you may notice that the orientation of the sphere is not quite right. But yeah, you can see that uh, in my sphere mesh, the polygons are bunching up at the top of the sphere. But in my custom shape, this bunching of the uh, polygons is happening here on the side. And that is actually one of the main problems that we encounter when working with custom widgets. But I'll show you an easy workflow that works every time, so stay tuned. But before we go into how we can fix that, let's cover the rest of the easy stuff. Under custom object, you'll see uh, scale and the default value is one. And if I tweak this value by uh, holding my mouse over it and scrubbing left and right, then I can change the size of this uh, custom shape. And often you want to fine adjust this size. So if I hold shift while you uh, adjust this value, then the adjustment will be much finer and you'll have more control over it. The next option, Override transform is quite advanced, so I'm going to handle it separately. Then you're going to see another option, a checkbox that says scale to bone length. By default, it is on, and that will adjust the size of the custom widgets based on the length of the bone. 
if I go to edit mode and select the end of my bone and make it longer by moving it in the Z direction and then go back to pose mode, you'll see that my sphere has become much uh, bigger. Okay, if I go back to edit mode and make this bone much smaller, then again, the sphere will become much smaller. And if I draw a line over here and then switch to edit mode, you'll see that this line is corresponds exactly uh, with the length of the bone. Let's make it longer, draw a line and go to pose mode. And again, the sphere will be, actually, I should change the scale to one. And here you will see that the size of the sphere will correspond to the length of the bone. And that reminds me of something else. If you're coming from another software like Maya or Max, you have to keep in mind that in Blender, this bone is using a custom object uh, for its shape. But if I switch to edit mode, it is still a bone. If we uncheck this option, then the default size of this custom widget will become exactly exactly the size of our mesh. And that can be very useful. To get predictable results, you have to ensure that uh, the scale is applied under item. It needs to be 1, 1, 1. If you scale this uh, object up or down, these values will change and then you need to press Control A and choose scale and that will apply the scale. Okay, and then the last option that we have is wireframe. And if I click it, then this object will be displayed as a wireframe. And we generally don't use this option. The default way to work in Blender is to actually not use polygons, but only edges. And this is another thing that is a little bit specific to Blender. In most uh, 3D applications, you cannot have edges just floating in the air, but in Blender you can. So if I go to edit mode for this sphere and um, alt click to uh, select a edge loop, and then I'm going to add a few more edge loops by alt shift and clicking, something like that. Then I'm going to press control I, X and delete vertices. And that will leave me with this wireframe looking object that is only made of edges. And as you can see, my custom shape also changed to this shape, which only consists of edges. Now, if I go to pose mode and select it, whether I have wireframe on or off, doesn't matter. And actually the reason that people use splines as uh, custom shapes in other applications is exactly this, that you can have this kind of shape, which is easy to select and see, but does not overlap and hide your actual character. Okay, finally, I'm going to show you uh, how you can use splines or Bezier curves as custom objects. So in the custom object field, I'm going to use the Bezier circle. And of course, the custom shape is going to disappear. I'll go to object mode, select the Bezier curve. Let's go to edit mode and give it some interesting shape. One of the benefits of using curves is that you can easily give them very complicated shapes that are a little bit hard to achieve with uh, meshes. But anyway, let's do something like this. Go to object mode and then choose object, convert to mesh from curve. Okay, and right away the curve will be displayed as the custom object. And that is because this curve or what used to be a curve is now a mesh. If I go to edit mode, th these are just simple vertices and edges. I'll go back to object mode and undo. Okay, uh, I'll undo until the custom shape is gone, which means I'm back to having a Bezier curve. And here is a quick trick that you can use if you uh, don't want to convert your curve to a mesh. You can just go to the modifier uh, tab for this curve and add some modifier. Uh, for example, triangulate will work. Subsurface will also work. I'm not sure, but I think most of these uh, modifiers will do the trick. 
So I'm going to choose the triangulate uh, modifier because it, it won't make our scene much heavier. Okay, and now the curve is being used as a custom mesh. But the cool thing is that this is still a curve, which is uh, visible over here in the out outliner. This uh, icon here means that this is uh, still a curve. I can go to edit mode and edit it as a curve. And yeah, that's it. Those are the absolute basics. As you can see, the orientation of this custom uh, shape is clearly different than the object that is being used as a custom shape. So next, let's go into that. To figure out how to align a custom shape correctly, uh, we have to talk about world and local coordinates, orientations, axis, and so on. I know it's not everyone's favorite subject, but understanding this stuff does pay off and I'll try to make it as painless as possible. The world space coordinates are easy to figure out. Just look at the upper right corner of the 3D view and you'll see the 3D viewport axis and it will show you that this direction is Y, this is X and up is Z. In the 3D view, you can also see that this uh, green line uh, shows the Y axis, the red line shows the X axis, and I can even visualize the Z axis under overlays. Here are the viewport axis drawn in the viewport. We can also visualize the axis for individual objects. If I select this sphere and go to Object Properties, Viewport Display, I can activate Axis. And that will show me this viewport gizmo that represents the orientation of this object. And as you can see, the orientation is the same as the world orientation. So in Blender, when you create a new object, it is automatically uh, aligned with the world orientation. Let's see how that works with bones. I'm going to select my armature object and go to edit mode and to visualize the axis for individual bones inside your armature, you need to go to the armature tab, viewport display and tick axis and this gizmo will appear. Okay, there is under object properties, viewport display, there is another checkbox called axis, but I'm going to move this uh, bone out of the way a little bit and press slash to isolate. So the axis under object properties is the axis for the whole armature as an object. Everything that we can select as a single unit in object mode is an object. Uh, so the armature is an object, uh, each individual mesh is an object, the Bezier curve here is an object and so on. So we don't know, want this um, object axis, we want the one under uh, armature tab, which displays the axis for the individual bones. And you'll see that the axis of this bone is not aligned with the world coordinates. You know, the X is kind of pointing in the same direction, but the Y and Z axis are not aligned with the world. And that is not a problem in itself. In fact, most of the time bones have random orientation. But that's the reason why the custom object that we applied earlier seem to be oriented differently than the object that is used as a custom shape. When these axes match, when the axis of this in, of the individual bone and the object that is used as a um, custom shape match, then the orientation of the uh, custom shape will be the same and, and it will behave predictably. So let's make a new shape where it will be easier to see the orientations. I'm going to go to object mode and delete these two objects that we have. And notice how the custom shape for this uh, bone did not disappear, even though we deleted the uh, object that was used as a custom shape. I'm going to talk more about this in a second, but basically Blender keeps a copy of this shape uh, in memory. So I'm going to make a new object. This is not a modeling tutorial, so I'm going to uh, speed through it. So 
So I made this object that uh, looks like arrows uh, aligned with the world orientations. If I enable axis under object properties and enable X-ray, I can see that uh, the orientation of this object itself is also uh, still oriented with the world. And that's exactly what I need. Okay, and now I'm going to select my armature, go to pose mode, for example, bone tab. And here I'm going to remove the current uh, custom object and choose my new one. And the new custom shape was applied and you'll see that it's oriented exactly as the bone is oriented. The Y axis of the custom object is pointing in the Y axis of the bone object. The X axis of the custom object is pointing in the X axis of the bone object and Z to Z. Okay, if I go to object mode, select my custom object and uh, rotate it on the X axis so that the Y is pointing up, then you'll see that I get the exact same orientation for the actual object and for the custom object that I have applied here. I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo. Now if I go to the armature edit mode and uh, go to side view and kind of place this bone flat on the ground like this and then go to object mode. You'll see that again this object and the custom shape are oriented in the same way and that is because by placing this bone flat on the ground, I aligned it with the world. Um, if you pay attention to these axes and these ones, you'll see that they are oriented in the same way. And this object is also aligned with the world axis. So that's it basically. As long as the object that you're using as a custom shape and the bone that is using that uh, object as a custom shape are aligned in the same way, then you'll get predictable orientation of your custom shape. So let's practice this a little bit more. I'm going to orient this bone completely randomly. Okay, I'm going to remove the custom object for now. And now if I want to assign this object again to this bone, but with a reliable orientation, then I could do something like this. Move the custom shape at the base, at the head of, the, of this bone. And then I want to orient the Y axis to the Y axis of the of the bone. It helps to go through uh, front, top and side views one by one and orient it. OK, so that's looking more or less uh, correct. So now I can go to the bone pose mode and select the cube, which is my custom object. And if, as you can see, they're fairly uh, well aligned. With some more work I can do a better job but actually I'll stop here because this is not a very practical example. The most challenging thing that happens a lot in practice is that you have a bone that is oriented in a random direction and you have an object that you want to use uh, as a custom shape and that object is usually aligned with the world or it may have a random uh, orientation. So basically your bone and your object have orientations that don't match and you need to make them match. So let's see what we can do in these cases. I'm going to remove the custom object, go to object mode and just delete this uh, object that we used as a custom shape. I'm going to make a new UV sphere for example, edit mode, and I'm going to do the same thing that we did before. I'm going to turn it into a wireframe looking shape, something like that. Maybe I'll pull one of the vertices up so that we, we um, have more complicated shapes so that we can see what's happening. So uh, when a, a shape is very circular, you may not be sure if it's completely aligned, but with this kind of randomness, uh, we'll be able to verify that uh, our alignment is perfect. Stretch it a little bit like that. Okay, so I have this shape and let's say that I want to keep my bone with exactly this or orientation that it has currently. But I want its shape to be exactly as this object that I have here in the viewport. To do that, there are two things that we need to do. One, we need to move the 
origin of this object to the head of this bone. That's one. And two, we need to make this orientation of, of this object match the orientation of the bone that we see here. If we try to apply this custom shape now, it will be, uh, the shape will be oriented uh, quite randomly. And so one solution that uh, was popular in all the versions of Blender was to kind of orient this object as the custom shape in object mode and then go to edit mode and uh, bring it back in the original position, which uh, I think you can see how it's very uh, tedious and error prone. So I'm going to undo until I don't have the custom object. And then I want to select this object in object mode, go to tools, options, and here you'll find the effect only uh, options. You can affect only origins, only locations, and only parents. The one that we want in this case is origins, so I'm not going to go into the other ones. So if you tick origins and then try to move uh, the object, it you'll notice that it stays in place. I can use the gizmos or I can also press G. Uh, I can also press R, uh, which will rotate only the gizmo, not the object. So the object keeps its orientation, but its location, rotation, and scale uh, parameters will be affected here. So S will kind of scale this uh, gizmo and it will that will be also visible here in the scale. I'm going to press Alt S to make sure that my scale is set to 111. And so I want to move this origin over here at the head of the bone. And that is very easy to do. I'm going to select the bone, edit mode, select the head of the bone, Shift S, cursor to select it, go to object mode, select this object, Shift S, selection to cursor. And the origin of this object will be moved exactly at the base of this bone, at the head of the bone. Okay, and the second thing we need to do is to align the orientation of the object with the orientation of the bone. Now, I always find it weird that the orientation of the bone is displayed here at the tail of the bone. I'm not sure why that is, even though the pivot point of any bone is the head of the bone. So one thing that we could do is in edit mode, set the cursor over here and then move the origin to it. And then in this state, I can uh, double tap R and try to align the orientation of the object with the orientation of the bone. Again, I'm going to do it from front view, side view, and top view. And when you repeat this uh, once or twice, you'll have a fairly good orientation. Okay, now I have to uh, bring the origin back to the head of the bone. So cursor to selected, selection to cursor, and that's it. Now my origin is exactly at the head of the bone and it's perfectly oriented with the orientation of the bone. Now I can select the bone, go to pose mode and select this sphere object as the custom shape. And as you can see, the orientation is perfect. It matches perfectly. From here, if I did, if I wanted to change the shape of this custom shape, I would just go to the shape, go to edit mode. And, you know, any edits I did, I do here will be reflected in the custom shape. Um, once you're done, don't forget to turn off origins over here. Otherwise, you won't be able to move your object and you'll only be moving the origins. But yeah, any edits I did I do here will be reflected in the custom shape. Okay, that's it for the manual uh, alignment of bones. Next, I'm going to show you how to do this with an add-on, and you're going to hate me because it's with the add-on, it's really, really easy. But I did want to show you the manual way because, you know, sometimes add-ons break, and it's always good to understand what is going on under the hood. So anyway... Let's uh, get rid of this custom shape and then I'm going to place my shape roughly where I want it again. And then you want to download this add-on. It is called Orient Bone Shape by Scared Fish or something like that. You can see the URL over here and I'm also going to share it in the video description. You have to go to this green button that says code and choose download zip that will download the zip file into your computer. Then you have to go back to Blender, Edit, Preferences, 
go to the add-ons tab, install, find where your downloaded script was uh, located. I have a folder called Blender Scripts and I put all of my um, scripts over there. And now if I search for bone, I'm going to find Orient Bone Shape. And I would click install add-on. I already did that. So I'm going to go back and over here, I'm going to search for Orient, Orient Custom Shape and I'm going to activate it. Okay. And the way this uh, add-on works is you need to have your object that you're going to use as a custom shape and select it. Then shift select the armature where you want to apply this uh, custom shape. Go to pose mode, select the bone that you want to affect and then right click. And at the bottom of this right click menu, you'll find a few new options that you didn't have before you installed this add-on. And the first one is set and align bone shape. Just click it. And just like that, your object was set up perfectly and it was assigned as a custom shape to this bone. Let's go back to object mode. Actually, let's undo because I already kind of aligned this bone. And there may be some doubt that that influenced this process. So I'm going to press Control A for this object and just choose all transforms. And that will apply location, rotation and scale. Then I'm going to shift select the bone, pose mode, select the bone, right click, set and align bone shape, and boom, there we go. And now my shape is perfectly aligned. All the alignment and rotating of the pivot and moving of the pivot that we did uh, manually before is done here with one click, which is great. Now you should know how to create perfect custom shapes or widgets for your bones. Okay, and at the end, I just want to give you a little bit more information that may be useful. If you switch to the armature tab on the viewport display, you have a checkbox called shapes. If that is unchecked, then all bones will be displayed in their default bone shape. So uh, if your custom shapes are not showing, then make sure this checkbox is checked. Oh, and this add-on that I showed you actually has a few other useful features. For example, now I move this object to the side. If I just go to the armature pose mode, select this bone and right click and then uh, choose align bone shape, then the shape, the custom shape will be aligned with the current uh, position and uh, orientation of this object that I have. Okay, I don't really want to do this, so I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo. Now I'm going to go to object mode, select this object and delete it. And as we saw before, this custom shape did not disappear. It is still somewhere inside of the memory of or inside of the data of this blend file, but we are no longer able to change the shape of this custom shape. But with this add-on, we can bring this shape back. I'm going to go to pose mode, select the bone, right click and choose extract shape. And here the shape is back. I can go to it. If I try to edit it, it won't uh, affect the custom shape. So I would have to position it again. And then again, shift select the, the armature, go to pose mode, select this bone and choose a set and align bone shape. And there we go. My bone is again, perfectly aligned with this new shape that I extracted. Okay, that's it. Uh, if you want more practice, I'll add one more video where we are going to add custom bone shapes for a real character. It's the dwarf that I showed you at the very beginning of this video. So this video was quite uh, theoretical and the next one will be just practice. But I'll be sure to uh, share some interesting tips along the way.